Usually this is the part of the video where I would say get ready for adventure, get ready for excitement, but I've already said that many times in past open world videos, so just insert a generic adventure line here. Why even bother, am I right? Greetings fellow Vita fans, this is James with PS Vita at 2am, coming at you once again with another open world PS Vita video, because I know that we just can't get enough of this genre, me included. And if you're new here and love everything PlayStation Vita, don't forget to subscribe, and make sure to leave me your suggestions on what open world games you enjoy down in the comment section below. Oh, and just a quick fun fact here, the reason why I like open world games on the PS Vita is because I'm not allowed to leave my own house. No really, seriously, I'm trapped here, help! I'm forced to do PS Vita videos against my will! Wait, is that an inside joke of an inside joke of an inside joke? I mean, uh, uh, let's get on with the first game, and that goes to The Amazing Spider-Man, a game that for whatever reason the physical copy of this title is going for, well, a lot more money than I ever thought it would be considering that I used to see this game all the time at GameStop. Then again, it is a Spider-Man game on the PS Vita, so maybe that alone will just sell copies. Or maybe there are just people out there who wish that they were bitten by a radioactive spider. Go fig! Now from what I know, this game is a sequel that is based off of the original Amazing Spider-Man movie that came out back in the day, which I've never seen so I can't really comment on how well the story meshes or whatever. Sorry, I'm just not a very big comic book guy. <laughs> Let's continue here. Months after the lizard incident, from former Oscorp industry scientist Kurt Connors, Peter Parker is now house-sitting his aunt's friend, Stan's apartment in Manhattan for the summer. Peter and his crush, Gwen Stacy, visit Oscorp Tower after hours of investigating on their continued work of cross-species genetics, and I guess you probably know the shenaniganry is about to happen because this is a Spider-Man game. And you know, that along with the usual bad Spider-Man pun lines. Whoa, I wonder if he took inspiration from this channel. Poor, poor guy. Now, although I can't comment directly on how great the story is as a sequel, I will say that the game itself is fun, and you get to fight a lot of the main Spider-Man villains that we have all come to know and love, such as the Scorpion, and of course the Lizard. And as I mentioned, the game is truly massive on the PS Vita, however there is a downside to this. Yep, 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 I think we all know where this is going. Because this game is so massive and open world, uh, the Vita does have a hard time as far as its processor goes in order to keep up with the game, so there is quite a lot of frame rate drops, and I don't mean like frame rate like it just gets slow or anything like that which yeah it does too but I mean there's parts where like the game will literally freeze frame trying to keep up and then choppily get you back up to speed to where you're at in said game oh and by the way choppily I copyright that word so if you're looking for the perfect port of this title unfortunately the Vita version isn't quite it but I will say if you are into overclocking your PS Vita then it does help quite a lot it's not perfect but it does help and hey look at the bright side here at least you're not having to deliver pizzas like you had to in other spider-man games now am I right man I could really go for some pizza. Come to think of it, that probably would have made the game a 10 out of 10 in my book, but oh well, still some open world goodness. Now we are featuring game number two, a title that always makes me hungry, which I think was kind of intentional, right? Is, or is it just me? Anyway, this is Guacamelee on the PS Vita, and yep, I'm officially hungry for some of that green stuff. Now this is sort of a mashup here, we got a pseudo open world slash metroidvania type of game. Or wait, now that I think about it, aren't they all technically categorized in that category? I don't know. But anyway, what's this game about? Well, Carlos Calaca has kidnapped El Presidente's daughter, and he plans to sacrifice her in order to merge the world of the living with the world of the dead. You play as Juan, I can't pronounce his last name, a farmer who stumbles upon a legendary luchador mask and who must now find the strength and courage to become the hero he's always dreamed of being and put a stop to all of this, you know, shenaniganry. Well, that's two games with some shenanigans going on in it. Now for me personally, and I got a feeling a lot of you out there feel the same way, who have played this game, one, it's really fun to say the word El Presidente, I could say that word all day, seriously, and two, one of the favorite things about it for many fans out there is that you can switch between the world of the living and world of the dead and depending on what environment you are currently in is used to solve the appropriate puzzles like for instance there might be a platform that you can't reach when you're in the world of the living but if you switch to the world of the dead one will appear and you'll be able to gain access to it and so on and so forth I was trying to think of something funny to say between the world of the living and the world of the dead but now nah, I'm just trying to blank here uh, I insert a uh, Coco movie references or something and of course like all Metroidvania games go as you explore the open world and dungeons and beat the bosses you will gain new abilities which will let you access more parts of this massive world now i have to admit here this is sort of on my walk of shame because uh i have still yet to beat this game okay we're all just waiting for it at this point so might as well play it
I am already at the very end, I just haven't got around to beating the final dungeon. I'm such a sad, sad luchador. So if you've never played this game before and plan to pick it up on the PS Vita, you'll more than likely beat it before I do. I'm such a sad, sad luchador. Okay, now here's a fan favorite for everybody, or come to think of it, that might not be true depending on the person that you talk to. But anyway, this is Borderlands 2. A new era of shoot and loot is about to begin. Play as one of the four new vault hunters facing off against a massive new world of creatures, psychos, and evil masterminds. Which in this game happens to be named Handsome Jack. Man, I wish I was as handsome as Handsome Jack. Make new friends, arm them with a bazillion weapons, and fight alongside them on a relentless quest for revenge and redemption across the undiscovered and unpredictable living planet. So, Borderlands 2. You love it, I love it, we all love it. And it's an awesome FPS game. However, as much as I do like the series, unfortunately, the PS Vita port of this title it just isn't up to snuff. Yeah, I gotta address the elephant in the room here. The frame rate in this game is, like, absolutely horrible. Sometimes you're lucky if you can even get, like, 15 frames per second in some environments. Nope, I ain't kidding about that, sadly. It's just choppy and buggy as hell. Heck. However, much like with The Amazing Spider-Man, if you are into overclocking your PS Vita, there are some workarounds for this title, some specifically made for this game, so that just shows you how bad it is, that does help it run a lot smoother than it is by default. It still doesn't get it quite up to snuff compared to the console versions, in my personal opinion, but I just wanted to let you all know that if you're looking to pick up this game and you don't have a way of overclocking your PS Vita, those drop frame rates probably will be a game killer for you, if you'll pardon the pun. I mean, just look at the front artwork. The jokes just make themselves. So the next honor goes to Sword Art Online. Uh, let's go with Lost Song, because quite frankly, all of these Sword Art Online games could really be considered open world. So we're just picking our poison here. Why am I saying poison? Well, you'll see. So I'm pretty sure all of you know what Sword Art Online is about, but in case you don't, you play as Kirito. I know I'm probably butchering that name, I can never say it right. Somebody in the comment section told me that once. And yeah, they're right, my pronunciation is pretty bad. Like, as in horrible. And you gotta, you know, save the world. That's pretty much the concept for every game, am I right? And in this, you will experience fast-paced battles in the air and on the ground, which was kind of makes the Sword Art Online game stand above the rest, along with seamless action sequences in a game that makes you feel freer than ever before. Choose your skills and how you want to battle or to evolve. It's all up to you. And remember, the more you grow, the more epic the battles. And the more you probably won't get stomped on by, like, bosses and whatnot either, just saying. And for actual fans of the anime, you'll be happy to know that Savin Rain and Sumeragi from Lost Song join the anime regulars in a brand new story. On a scale of 1 to 10 here, just how bad were those pronunciations? I'm kind of curious. I know, I know. Now I'm just asking for it. Now for me personally, I was always more of a dot .hack fan, but that's just me. I know, I'm probably talking heresy here now, aren't I? Now as much as I did enjoy this game, I will admit that the single player experience is kind of... Eh, it kind of leaves much to be desired. The combat is fun and all, but you see the same enemies repeated a lot. Same goes for the boss battles, unfortunately, which makes kind of the whole game feel a bit on the repetitive side. And honestly, the story just feels a bit on the flat side as well. See, now you all know what I meant when I said we kinda gotta pick our own poison here. Again, I'm not a huge SOA fan here, and while there is a story regarding some mystery involving a group known as like the Shamrock and their like leader who is named Seven, which again, I guess is fan service for the SOA fans out there, I just didn't find it very engaging to say the least, without going into spoilers here. And even when you're playing the main character who talks like with the other characters, it just seems like it's just really just small talk at the end. Nothing really that engaging. Though I will say, I really do like the waifus in this. They're definitely tempting me to get into the series. So while I did like this Sword Art Online game for what it was, I do feel like it's one of the more weaker experiences on the PS Vita. But what did you think about this game? Did you enjoy it? And how bad do you hate me for not liking it that much? Yeah, now I know I'm definitely asking for it. And that'll just about do it for open world games on the PS Vita. And while I don't think we had the most splendid list on this video, honestly, these games were pretty good, but some of them did have their issues, whether or not it came to actual gameplay or just frame rates and whatnot. But do check out Guacamelee, because as far as gameplay and performance goes, I think it probably is top tier of the bunch, at least in my opinion. But what do you think? Which one of these games on the list was your favorite? What games do you recommend that are open world? I'd love to hear from you, so get a type in down below. And as always, follow V fans. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. 
This video has been brought to you in part by all of these wonderfully generous supporters who help make this content possible. So a huge thank you goes out to Randy Azadech, Berserker Games, Makise Blob, B Mystery, Mad Fox, Reiko Star, Neo Rashi, Milk Sama, Bushin Ryu Cat, Airkick72, Wathorga, Zakrito, Alan Iwazuk, Shin Snake, Meshuga360, Catherine.uk, Gutter Drums, Himdal Imber, Wendy K, David Ray, Phantom XRS, Saul Ramirez, Kyle Brooks, JR, Silica, Per Sterner, Adam Thury, Skullshir Tugel TCG, BMF, Claymer Merlarkey, BG Legends, Jared Hado, Kevin Enright, Heston Joseph, Crazy Cat, Rodrigo Vera, Hero Acer, Adam Sondi, BS Vita S, Richard Cruz, Joseph Shavak, Jale, Eight Shitter, Michael O'Connor, Chris Foxhound, Sabin Fire, Franz Hartle, Aridri, No Good, Lacerated 87, Starlight Mirror, PSP Guru, Jamie, Hector Gonzalez, Kayonko, Burzin Mystery, Juan M. Hermesio, Eric DeWitt, Tasha Monti, Mazgus, Matt Hargit, Buzz Saiyan, Razal Pliskin, 1488 Dental, Azumara, Nintendo Switch at 2am, Donut Valley, Ricardo Martinez, and Dr. Super Artie. And a big thank you to Blaine Locklear, Michael Marchan, and Thomas Kremet for the recent outside donations. If you would be interested in supporting the channel and gaining access to a number of perks, including having your name featured on the end credits of these videos, or if you wish to remain anonymous that can be provided too, then make sure to check the links down in the description below. I have numerous ways for you to do this down there. Can't support in this manner? Don't worry about it. I also have some affiliate links from both Amazon and PlayAsia for anyone who is interested in purchasing something from them. Basically, the way it works is so long as you use one of those links to just access their website, then anything you purchase afterwards, a small commission will go to help support this content at no extra cost to you, the consumer. I also have channel merchandise available, and of course, as always, likes and shares can help equally as much. No, seriously, those waifus really did tempt me to start watching Sword Art Online. You guys don't find that shallow now, do you?